Hey, good morning, Instagram. Happy Friday. It is 7 a.m. on the West Coast, 10 a.m. on the East Coast. Let's see, Central Time. Where are we at on Central Time? Two hours difference, so 9 o'clock. Hawaii can be... Ooh, Hawaii is early still. Three hours. They're not even up yet. But I did this early this morning. Um, one, to try and make it to where everybody can play. But two, just to start off my Friday um, in honor of Veterans Day weekend. And this will be a two-part class. So I'm going to do the first part this morning. And this is Friday, November 10th. And then I'll do the second part tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. Saturday, November 11th. And during that class, I do have a, a website giveaway that's going on. If you go to catfurrowart.com, there is a website link giveaway. Enter in and you still have time. I'll make that announcement tomorrow. But if you're watching this after um, the November uh, 10th, 11th giveaway, then still enter in. Stay tuned to that link because I'll be um, putting another giveaway together, at least two between now and Christmas. So feel free to continue to enter. But here, this is what we're going to paint. And this is honor of a friend of mine um, that I lost on Westpac uh, one year in a peaceful situation, but lost another, nevertheless while deployed. And he left behind a beautiful bride and two, two babies. And then uh, just with Veterans Day one, I thought it would be a good cool way to represent um, them through a wine and, or a paint and sip type thing. I used to do wine and paint classes. Um, honor veterans, I, I have a long family history of people that have served and lost few friends. So I thought it would be a great way to acknowledge them, my people, and just the world right now. Um, my statement is that we freedom is not free. But anyway, here we go. So what I did is this is going to we're going to do this on an art journal in an art journal style. I took the original. The original is behind me. Let me show that my face. Awesome. There we are. So the original is behind me and she is right here. So I'm going to put her together for us. And let me move that out of the way. But I am Kat of catfurrowart.com. And that light's driving me bonkers. So it is going away too. What an ugly light. Light is not my friend unless it's natural light. So I'm Kat of catfurrowart.com. And please choose to follow. We're going to do this in an art journal style again. So I put together a lot of my work, initial, initial work and thoughts in art journal books and pages. I call them studies. I'm going to show you what I mean by that. So this I painted last night. This is um, um, a version of a poppy's piece that we did yesterday. This is the piece that we're going to do today. Um, and then there's some others in the pipeline that are coming. So I like to show or introduce people to paper because paper is what um, made me free. Canvas sometimes is intimidating, sometimes intimidating, and I don't like to be intimidated. So I try and find a solution, and paper was my solution. And now I can paint on anything, really, without reservation. So what is wonderful, of, I think is wonderful about my style, is this lovely purple pastel pencil. I have a million of them. It really gives me freedom. And what I have in the painting is a back line, right? We never put the, hor the um, horizon line in the center of the page. That just splits a page, makes it look bulky, makes it look ugly, that type of thing. So we're going to put the horizon line at the top third, just above the top third. So this page is split. It's perforated here. So I can tear it if I want. So I'm about three inches from the top of my 11 by 14 page. And this is, since it's horizontal, it's 11 
inches high, 14 in length. And from here, I split the page in about thirds again. So I'm going to come in another three inches. You can call it four if you want. And the point is, is to keep it off center. You don't want to bring it in the center. And from this point here is where my flag is going to be. And again, I'm using this lovely purple pastel pencil. And I like it because it just allows me some freedom. And the chalk will add texture um, to the piece. And I may even bring that down. Let's see. Let's bring that down a little bit. That's what's going to happen. So you're seeing, you're seeing me work in real style. I don't like the height of that. I'm going to bring it down. I don't have the piece in front of me. So I'm going off of memory, out of my mind, and not literally out of my mind, as in going out of my mind, but from my mind. I'm going to darken the edges a little bit. I do want some curvature. And just by playing with this pencil, it's going to introduce texture um, that the paint will pick up later. I'm going to bring in some hard purple line there to define that pole. We do have, I'm going to put a, um, a ball on top of it just for the sake of fun. And I'd always put the form of a POW flag underneath. And I'm just going to call this POW flag and make a odd shaped rectangle. And I'm filling it in and I'm curving my little pencil back and forth. And believe it or not, the paint and the brush and everything, your mind will help pick that up. Just because you've put those lines in, you've had that thought process, your mind will capture it later in your painting process. I Just trust me on that one. So there's our POW. Um, we're going to do a lot of drawing and people get upset. Right. I, I rarely give I rarely give traceables. Rarely, rarely. I do have my coffee with me this morning and it is caffeinated. And let me just say hello one more time. Hi, I'm Kat of catforart.com. I'm happy now with my coffee. Um, I like to encourage people to draw. And if I can give traceables, then then it kind of defeats the purpose for me. Um, forcing myself to draw is how I succeeded. And one of the ways I succeeded, pr the predominant way I succeeded was forcing myself to draw with a Sharpie and literally a purple pastel pencil. And from here, um, we have, we're going to pull the lines down. So I have one line here that's going to be red. And... From here, this is the flower fields we're making. This one's going to be white. And I'm writing this in so we don't forget. And I do this literally for myself. Notice, too, that here I'm going to exit. I'm exiting this line ahead or not directly out of this corner. I never exit a line out of the corner, and that matters. That matters to the eye, and it just matters about design. And then here... I'm going to come down wide, and this one's going to be blue. So it is coming out of the corner, but it's doing so where it's not just totally in alignment here. So then that's okay. That's blue. And then here, I'm going to come just past the center line, the center of the page. I am center line. That's the center line on my ships. That's the way I think of that. So red. Some of my language probably will never change. We have military people. We have our own vocabulary. So this one's white. And I definitely am retired from the service. And that's blue. And this one we're just going to call red, although... There's going to be other lines in here. We're going to represent. I'm going to pull some blue, and I'm going to put all the white, the white, and the blue in here. But for now, I'm going to call that one red, and I'm going to leave this open. And I'm just putting some shading in here. And what this is going to do in the long run is we're going to really put some fine line in here. This purple pastel is creating the under colors, and it's creating 
um, the illusion of rows of in a field. Um, but over here, we're going to really do some fine line. So that's what that's telling me. And then I've identified everywhere I'm going. This is my roadmap out here to me. So I live in Carlsbad and the Carlsbad flower fields actually do a, a thing at Memorial Day where they have a field of flowers that's red, white and blue. And then I have ocean that's out here. So we're going to create the idea of ocean with this purple by smudging it about here. And really this creates the map. And then this is a piece that I have at night. And, you know, would we visit a flower field at night? Not necessarily. Would we a cemetery? Because there are graves in this flower field, possibly. You know, that can happen. But for, as a, a veteran and one that's raised children, and I was married to a person in the service as well, night is the hardest time to be away from those you love when you're in fear of them and um, or fear for them. And when I think of children, nighttime it seems to be the, the most, the greatest struggle. And those that have lost others or are alone, nighttime is often the greatest struggle. So I purposefully put this at night. Then the other thing is we're gonna have some fireworks that are gonna happen. Fireworks came about out of war, actually. It was a means to, I, I won't go into war history on fireworks, but it's representative of, of war to me. So that's the purpose behind the fireworks in this piece. And then I'm just creating additional shading with my pencil. So that all by itself is already kind of a cool pastel piece. And that's just one color. So when you shade or use, you can, I'll just say shade. You can pull the, the chalk that we've put on here down the field. And it creates the rows for you. You keep them in the same line as the lines you created. It's almost like painting with your fingers. And paint, in the concept of art, paint, painting is not limited to the actual materials that we traditionally associate with painting. Painting with pastel and other materials, it's considered painting, literally. So you are painting with pastel in this process. So the other, what we're, we've done is we've really created a great roadmap for shading. So here's my brightness. Here it's going to be a little darker. Up here, let's, I'm going to even create a little more darkness. The right, closest I get to this flagpole is the darkest scenario, darkest areas. I am creating the light from the right-hand side here. So I will keep this area the lightest there's a that's the reason I started the color scheme and as far as the red the white the blue down here so I could have the white here as well and as I come away from here it's going to get a little darker and then these fine lines over here are going to be tight tight lines they won't be as wide as what I mean as these others as I get closer and closer to this section of the horizon line when we introduce color they're going to be really narrow field lines. And that's going to create our distance for us. Over here, I kept this area lighter. Right? And this is just, I'm showing the drama. That's the line. So now I want to show how to draw a girl without fear. So in the design, and let me see if I can show it real quick again. The peas. Maybe she'll show up for me. Maybe she won't. So in the design of this piece, I wanted her to really be powerful. So she is up here. We're going to take, build her body from the top of the page all the way to the bottom of the page. 
most of her legs will be obscured. And then over here, I have the tiny flag, and that really creates perspective. And there's a lot of drama that that creates as well. The first color that I'm going to grab is, um, sorry, I'm not ready to paint yet, my bad. First, I'm going to come back to my pencil, my purple pastel pencil. I'm going to draw my girl in. And what you're going to notice as I draw her in is when we go to paint, just like with all the other classes that I have, well, we're going to end up painting over a lot of this, including her. And you're saying, well, why am I drawing her now? Well, because the line that um, you put in there, it's a process for me to help you to um, find her with a paintbrush. So if you can draw her, you can paint her. And then two, the texture from the purple pastel helps create um, texture with the paint. And, and it just lends to an easier... Um, What's the right, how do I say that? It just helps you create the idea of a whole, gives you a whole lot of body to your painting without a lot of effort. It, hel it helps the mind to see more. And this chalk line will be underneath, even though you, you'll cover it up, the line of the chalk, the texture, the raisedness of it will be there. So again, I'm bringing her head all the way to the top of the page. She is about, so I broke it into thirds. One third of the way over is where I'm starting the back of her skull. So when I started with a square, often people will start with um, circles. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. But with this one, I went with a square. And then as I come to the left, I'm pulling some curvature lines, curvilinear lines, towards the flag because she's looking at the flag right and here at the base of her skull and that is about one and a half inches down about i'm going to put some dark line here this line here that is showing me the direction for me of her skull so if i were to think of this as a triangle um I can draw the triangle in. That's just giving me line to see the direction of her line of sight. I can come in and create curve lines this way as well. So that's really giving me a three-dimensional pull idea of her skull. I hope this helps people. And then over here, I'm going to leave this side a little lighter. Right, we're going to call this, her neckline here is going to be the darkest section right here. That's her sweet spot. I am leaving a little light up here, but I don't want to put, I don't want to make a face. So I am leaving color there as well. I hope all of that made sense. So here, I'm going to come down just a bit with my pencil. Because she will have some neck in there. I don't want too much neck. And I may need to sharpen my pencil unless I have another one prepped. And now I'm going to scribble. So she has a shoulder, and we have a shoulder. And what's great about this line here is this line for me is her is her spine, right? So there's the center of her skull comes down into her neckline, and that's going to be her spine line, and that matters because that helps you create the idea of where she's turned. Where it helps in the three-dimensional scape. It helps create more her proportions as you bring her together. So there's her spine, and that's a good line to remember. Shoulders have kind of a squared round shape to them up here. They're softer. So I, I, may, I say square because it helps people to draw squares and then I soften it with some curve softness I don't know and then right here we have a collarbone so I put that area in there because that helps 
create the next part, which is shoulder line, right? You're like, Katie, why are we doing all this? Because I just like to teach. So there's her shoulder line. And then from there, she's going to come down and we're going to have that, that backbone that comes in. And we're going to spool, have a waistline. And if you wanted, you could just come down and do a full square, right? Here's a square or a rectangle. And if I wanted, I could do another kind of square -ish. And then I'm going to pull a single line through, and that's going to show her legs, right? And even though her legs are not going to be very present in this piece, we're going to cover them up. We are going to paint them before we cover them up. So shoulder lines. We have, let's see, let's bring, I made a square to her waistline. And then here is going to be where her buhiney would be and some leg. And way down here is going to be where her knees are. But I'm just showing you when you're coming in with this chalk, you talk to yourself about where the body is. And really, this, this is one section here. This is the next section. And these are pretty equal in, in um, dimension for most people. Okay, so here I want to have an arm down here. So I'm just going to barely chalk in an arm. And this arm is going to be loose because she's going to be holding a flower. So I want to tell myself that. And over here, I do know that I'm going to have her holding some flowers too. So this shoulder, her arm is turned. So this whole blade of her arm would be turned at as a cocked angle. So I'm going to pull this this back side of her arm into her back line a bit. And I'm just showing that with this dark, heavy line of chalk. And that heavy line of chalk is going to be a shadowed line that tells me that. And then I'll bring some at her elbow. I bend it just above her waistline and extend her arm out there. And that's all I need to do for that. You're like, why? Why all this? So, I think it matters. So, the next part, which is really easy, is just scribble, right? Here's a little scribble. She's wearing some sort of sassy dress. So, we have this line here. I chose a sassy, shorter dress because my friend that passed was young and his wife was really cute. And she liked little short sassy dresses. So that's why I have a little short sassy dress. And I wanted to represent that people that pass in the service, are we usually associate death with age. And people that pass in the service typically are not of age to pass. So this is a wine and paint that, or a paint and sip class or whatever art class that you want that um, is a mindful class for me it's my purpose anyway to share and to really honor those people gone alrighty so that is our scribble for her that's a whole lot of that process and we will add some more in there when we paint her, but that is a great shape, great start. So already, let's add, I know that we're going to have some line on her sleeve line. I know that I'm going to have a sleeve line over here. We talked about um, collarbones and all this, and all this color, where I'm really laying in heavy with this pastel, it's going to help you later when we come in with the paint. And I hope that helps you. Before I step away from her, I am going to use my fingers, kind of marry some of that color in a little bit. And the rest of it is going to, because we'll end up painting over her a lot in this process. Okay. Hey. 
much. So the first color I really want to come in with, this may sound funny, is orange. So I said purple earlier. I changed my mind while we were playing. But I'm coming in with a pyro orange. Um, so my colors, I noted the colors in the description. It's there in the pages. You use what you have. Um, I'm using medium body paints. I'm using the brushes that were noted in the details. And they're just very simple craft brushes. Um, 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 um. Use whatever you have. I also, what I forgot to put in there, <laughs> so I'm going to use an old toothbrush in this painting. So I did forget that. If you have an old toothbrush, grab an old toothbrush. If not, whatever you want, you could use. Um, I'm going to use it to actually draw paint through on the page. So the colors, I'm going to use orange. I'm going to use an orange. I'm going to use a pyrol red. I'm going to use paints gray, a purple, all the colors that I noted. Um, but use what you have. This, the key to this is, um, that's why I'm doing it in two parts, is to let it dry. Because I'm on paper, um, the paper takes longer to dry than a canvas top. The paint sits on top of the canvas. So sometimes it's, it's um, more conducive to speed. So paper I have to be careful with. I'm going to use very little water. But pyrol red, orange is the color I'm going to start with. Um, if you don't let the layers dry a little bit in between, the thing will turn brown. So we don't want that to happen. Mm -hmm. I'm going to come in with the uh, one inch flat and I'm picking up all of my orange that you can see over here on my right and where I want it first is in the white area and all the paint I'm going to start at the corner and pull down so I'm starting and pulling down and starting and pulling down and yes I'm painting right through her why are you painting through her well when a person is standing there in a dress or anything, sometimes you see, you can see light through them. You can see through material sometimes, so that helps that. Two, it's going to introduce that color into, into her whole aura or being, layers of her. And it will help in the process of creating her. The other part is it marries the, pa the pastel to the page. Um, it shifts the tone, the purple and the orange makes a luscious brown. I don't know if my camera will pick it up, but on yours it may. It's just a gorgeous learning opportunity to see how color works well and the colors it makes. When we mix color, it's luscious. So why orange underneath? I want an undertone underneath the brown, underneath the white that will be here to... Um, Give the illusion of brown color. So that's the reason. And I chose orange on purpose for that. So that's that color a little bit. So I too, I like orange underneath um, my red. So the red is here. So I picked up some more of the orange. And I'm going to come in here. Same thing. And... What I should have noted before I go further, so stop, is down here at, at my base, you can't see necessarily on my paper that's here, I wrote my color line. So I drew a small little um, replica of what I'm going to design here on my white paper. So you may choose to scribble a little note to yourself so you don't lose your color scheme. So being the red that where we wrote notes, red, white, blue, red, white, blue, and so forth, you may choose to write that order down. When I'm bringing in this color, I'm making sure to make sure my purple line stays. That keeping the purple line in place helps me to remember where the break in the color is. So I'm picking up some more orange. 
I don't lay out all my colors at once because I acrylic paint um, dries quickly. And I'm not mixing paint right now. I'm using the purple on the page to be the mix. So there's my white, which is going to be white. And here I'm just going to come in with a little bit of this red or the orange, excuse me, on top of this section that is going to be red. And I really like how you can see how it's turning into a luscious brown. People ask, Katie, why do you use purple so much? Because of the browns that it makes, I like to use colors to make skin tones. Excuse me, and I use the same colors for all skin tones. It's just on how I play them together. So I had blue, red, white, white. I'm going to screw up. Da, 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 blue. Here's my red. And then I'm going to just, even though I haven't defined what these lines are going to be out here, the color, I am going to draw some of this through. This is a horizon line that's here, so I'm going to bring some down that horizon line. And you can really see how the color changes based on the layer of purple that we put in there, how much darker, much richer this is. The other is you can also see as you draw your paintbrush through, if you've added as much of that pastel in there as I did, it will give you, it picks up the lines as you draw your brush across and it gives you built in row structure already, which is pretty cool. I like, I like. The downside to when you use pastels and acrylic paint is it can make cement in your bristles of your brush. So I'm pulling this paint out right now. I'm not introducing it to water just yet. I don't like to add water because water people you water just I'd rather you just paint let it dry. If you don't like something that you've painted let it dry paint over the top. The color and the texture underneath will lend to your process, will lend to the painting, will make the painting more dynamic, in my opinion. And it represents just life. We are our layers. Can't make them go away. So next I'm going to grab is the diazosine purple. And yesterday when I did that class, I could not open my container. Today I was delayed by a minute or two starting because I needed to open the container. Ah, sorry, Deb. Holy moly. Good morning, Deb. I really need to teach Winston to be my trusted psychic and how to operate a computer. Or a whistle needs to blow or something to tell me that, hey, someone left a comment. Katie, lift your head. Pay attention. Don't get lost in the Katie paint zone. But good morning. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. And I'm going to catch up on your questions real quick. And it says, good morning, Miss Katie. Thank you for your service. Oh, thanks. Thank you, Deb. Thank you for what you've done for law enforcement. Um, glad I know you love my purple pencil and I know you use it. And are you always up early? Good morning, Amy Brown. I always wonder who Amy, Amy Brown, I looked at your, at your, um, your Facebook page trying to figure out how I know you or if I do, but welcome and thank you for following. And Miss Deb, am I always up this early? Deb, Monday through seven days a week, baby girl is usually up at five o'clock. There are those opportunities that I take to sleep, but usually I'm up at five when I you understand some of the th people that I serve and some of those calls start coming in at 6 and today was no exception. I chose to start today at 7 a.m. and tomorrow um, because I have homework 
And so that I finish my day, I also go with my family and do something um, because of Veterans Day. And I make sure that I go to um, one of the cemeteries. So I have a busy weekend. And then the other is, is I just thought it'd be cool and I appreciate, I know that mornings is not your thing. So I appreciate you getting up for me. But I'm going to go back to painting now or we would just gossip. It'd be a one-sided conversation. And thank you, Amy. You should let me know how I know you. But I appreciate you sharing and all the things that you do on your Facebook page. Thanks so much. And you shouldn't. I said you should. I shouldn't. You should. That is such a terrible thing to imply. You should. You could share with me who you are. Awesome. So I've picked up the diazazine purple. This is Nova. I am putting together a whole thing of paints that's out of Nova. I I use a lot of Nova paint. I love their paint. Um, it's a company out, out of up north. It's an economical paint. It's cross between a fluid paint and a mid-body paint. That's why I like it. I love the pigment. I love the price of it. I love the paint. Did I mention that I love the paint? I love the paint. Um, but I also use a lot of golden, so today today I just have the golden out. And the reason, too, is my Novas that I'm working on, I'm identifying a paint um, collection that I'm going to commit to. And really, when I do the classes, that paint, my classes will be only from the paint collection that I recommend. Okay, so this was diazazine purple, and I used a half inch brush, craft brush, and I'm just dragging the edge of it down in the same manner that we drew the purple pastel pencil down the path or down the flower fields. I am someone that's been raised around agriculture, so I understand these fields. I have a lot of fun in my head when I drive down a highway and I see the fields. It reminds me of when I'm getting home, kind of, or what I consider home. But so I take it from the point of the um, flag here. That's our pivot point. And I'm just going to draw and keep make sure my lines are as straight or as plumb as possible as I draw down. It's darkest at the, um, and each pull on each row, it will be darkest at the, at the point of the flagpole as we come away from the flagpole. Those lines widen out and it brightens or it stays light. So as we're going through this process, this process defines where your highlights are going to be also. Why the diazazine purple? I like that color. I like its opacity. I like that it has coverage. I pull straight out of the bucket. I probably shouldn't, but I do. Um, here's blue over here. So this is defining my blue area and yes I'm going to be careful and mindful and take this across her as well and up here if if you have extra line of texture or extra of paint don't get don't worry if your lines cross over because dirt crosses into the rows. Seed splatter. If there's red in your white, white in your blue, whatever, the little birds sprinkle seeds. So it could happen in a natural process. Um, the extra layer or the line that I don't know if the camera will pick up, but as you're laying down a medium bodied or a heavy bodied paint, or when you're cutting through with the knife edge of your brush, it creates a line, a ridge in the paint line. Keep that. Let that dry in place. That is good for your painting. Please. So here I want to come in. I grabbed a little more on the edge of this, and I'm going to knock off and say, hey, this is my horizon line. I'm trying to keep that as straight as possible. And a straight line is one of the hardest things for humans to create because you, can I see this? You, you're a natural pivot. You naturally curve. So however, how it's just, it's 
when I'm in class, I can define it better. I can demonstrate it better when it's one on one. But a straight line is the hardest thing for the human to create pretty much. So don't feel like you're a bad person if you can't create a straight line. I certainly can't most of the times, but I try. All right, there's my horizon line, my back line. With this paint that's left in here, I am going to start at this horizon line and I'm going to move up. And where I have this dark shadow, the pastel that's in here, that is pretty much my um, roadmap for success. So I did say that we have some, that's kind of the idea of water, maybe, but it's back there. It's again, it's an idea. I'm not going to cover all of it. I'm just dragging my brush across this, including her, taking some of that left and right, even over that flag. Now, why would I do that? Well, one, it's going to be a nightscape. Um, so this will be the under color, perhaps two of the smoke and the fireworks and all the things. Have a great day, Amy Brown. I appreciate you. I think I may know who that Amy Brown is. Do I know who you are, Amy Brown? I probably do. Sometimes people don't want to show their face on Facebook as who they really are. Okay, so there's some of that purple. The, let's see, what else do I want in here? I do want, while I'm here, I have just a little bit of purple in here. I know where my red is going to be. So this is a red line here. So I want to drag some of that across to my red just because. And this one was red. I want to pull some of this red here. And I'm saying it, pull red, pull in the red area, and I'll put some over here. But I'm leaving the white alone. And now I'm going to rinse that brush. I too am going to rinse my um, one inch brush. Gonna make sure to pull all the pastel out best I can because the pastel and the acrylic make cement in my brushes. That's where I really destroy brushes. Good enough for now. Setting aside. Brilliant. Covering up my purple. Next color is going to be Payne's Gray. And the um, Golden uh, high flow white is what I'm going to break out. So there's some Payne's gray, very little. One thing that's great about playing on paper is it takes very little paint to accomplish something. There's my white. And that's so funny. I really need to fix my brush. That brush that I just rinsed with the Payne's gray or with the... I'm just going to grab up, pick up some of the Payne's Gray. And here I'm going to come in and put over the top. And what's cool to see is when Payne's Gray mixes with purple, it's kind of this luscious blue tone note. It's a smoky color. I like Payne's Gray a lot. One of my watercolor, they call it, um, one of the watercolor that I use is a very similar to Payne's Gray, only it has an luminescence to it. And it is called Luna, and I really think of my moon when I paint with it. So see how that just, we drag, I drug that over, very little paint. It was literally a dollop, a dot. And then that creates the idea of where um, the sky is. And already instead of clouds, what I'm going to 
consider this is where the smoke line would be from the fireworks display or as i mentioned in the conversation that it's also representative of war so fireworks or the smoke from war and i lost my pencil did i do there it is so i want to reintroduce my flag and i can see mine because i drew it in pretty hard and here is this flag here that i had in earlier and all that color and line that in here was the POW flag. So I just reintroduced, touched it up a bit, and it is there. She, if you want to capture her again, you can. Right? And if you thought um, any of your drawing was not very good, part of that goes away. And now I'm just recapturing some of the line that I like. And she had an arm over here. And I'm just going to leave that alone for now to show that she's still there. So I had that white on. I'm rinsing my brush that I just used with Payne's Gray. I have some white that's out. So I'm pulling the water out of the brush, picking up some of the white. And here I'm just going to marry in and I'm scooching. So I'm just really tapping in, dragging in, and scooching my brush around in the white space that I left Um, that was left as we introduced the color. So I already explained that. And over here, if it starts getting too bright and too light from the white, just stop. Because I do want to keep this section over here kind of dark. I want the lightness over here a little bit more, right? I do have this under area here that is darker that really pushes the background to the back that gives the power and get, builds the perspective in here. I'm gonna grab the, my Payne's Gray again. You may see, since we had <laughs> In the brush, we haven't had any red, but in my brush, there's been some orange in this and some of this purple. Now we've had white and some moisture uh, happen. And so you see like a pinkish color show up. Well, red is in orange and red is in purple. So that you may see that phenomenon occur and don't be afraid of that. Um, that's a natural color that could show up in the smoke line from all the uh, things that are going on, the reflection. So now I'm just coming back in with some of the Payne's Gray and tapping it in, starting at the base and working up a bit. I'm going to make sure that this left side stays darker than the right side. That's pushing it further away from me is what that is. And I'm tapping this brush in. I'm not side deciding. I'm not blending colors. If you're not achieving the same result, you can switch brushes. It's just I'm getting the result based on my the teeth, the tooth of my brush right now. If you want a different result, you can come in with a different brush as I'm demonstrating. Right? And if you needed to and soften that, if that helps your mind, you can do that. I'm now going to pick up some of the white without rinsing that brush and come right on top of that. And that just really creates some great blue. And then as it comes down, you, because I'm tapping, it's creating a fall to the color. And what that fall will be in the long run is when the fireworks come down or an explosion happens, the smoke and the residue falls. So it's going to create that illusion for you. That's what we're doing. 
and then I'm cleaning off my brush over here rather than wasting the paint just washing it off I'm just dragging the brush about reason I chose the order that we did is this has been drying while we've been playing in the sky so that's why that's happened I do have this little bit of white that's left a little bit I do want to pick up just a little dab of water and I do want to get a little naughty and flick some water and moisture on here not too much I'm not wanting it to run a whole lot I'm just starting a layer of texture I hope every, I'm really appreciating that everybody got up with me this morning Deb you kind of made my day say to you miss Amy Brown one of my other girls that normally is with me she is off with her baby girl today she will be looking at this later okay I did say this was going to be a two-part class I did say that next I would like to play with red so here is the thing so we will have red and white what I don't want to create is pink so that's the other reason to pay attention to how I lay in color so I want the red in first and I'm going to lay in and I'm going to let the red dry before I introduce the white to the white row if I had even though I had white out already if I had introduced white now my fear is that even I would create pink so I this is literally how I talk to myself and literally a process I would go through for myself so that I don't create pink because even when I think I'm not going to create pink I end up creating pink if I'm not careful so the next thing is is although I have quote cleaned this brush I've had white in it and I haven't cleaned it properly so I'm going to set this brush aside because I literally don't want any form of white from this brush that may still be in it to touch my red so I've picked up a different brush that isn't too dirty so I'm going to pick up a different brush that's still the same size longer longer handled same size bristles and all that type of thing and I'm going to pick up my red and here was my red row and I'm going to pull the red in and I'm pulling with from the knife edge from the point at um, where the flagpole is and pulling down and I'm going to stop and leave this as it is for now I'm going to pick up some more red so on the original piece the original was done in pastels chalks pastel soft pastels and acrylic paint heavy bodied acrylic paint not fluid paint so it's really textured um, ink um, what else do I use oil pastels I used oil pastels in it and I used oil paints in it so the other piece is is has a lot of raised texture to it so this is just the idea of that piece to get people carried away but if you have those tools you could introduce those tools to this page or to another piece to play so red white blue this orange is red And I am going to take the red all the way, even though I will introduce other color over here. Because I just mentioned about um, not wanting things to turn pink. Since I know I'm going to have some multiple rows over here and there will be white, I'm going to lay the white on top of some of that red eventually. 
and I don't want it to turn pink, so I'm laying the whole thing in as red to begin with. It will dry, then I'll be safe to put the white on top. Two, I can put blue on top of red and have no worry whatsoever. That's the reason why. While I'm here, so I have a second vessel of water. I have two vessels of water. So here I just made the second one, and it has clean water in it. Why clean water? Because I'm going to flick some red paint real quick. So just a little water, and I want some red in here. And I want it now. So now I'll rinse this brush. Just annihilated my clean water. And some more. All right, so next, back to the red. I'm still going to pull a little red. Not too much, just literally a dollop. And I have my dagger. Do I want the dagger? No, I don't want the dagger. Where's the other? Mm -hmm. Did I eat? There it is. I'm going to use the, the liner that I identified. Um... The brush is dry, and what I want to do is just put some squiggle line. There's, I'm not counting lines at all. So there's just some red line up there. That's all I need. So I'm going to rinse my brush. I think I noted um, a Persian blue. It is... Prushing blue, excuse me. Prushing blue. It's a really dark midnight color. Love this blue. So I'm going to pick up some of it. And over here, tap in. And capture some of that purple line. And I'm not worried about the shape this flag is billowing. I'm okay with running over some of that red line I just put in. And you can even draw some of that blue down wherever the purple was. Because what that'll do is it'll just create a bat, um, more shadowing for underneath that red. Um, potentially, because the fireworks are going on, potentially it would illuminate that flag and you would see some of the other color in there. So it just gives it a little more depth. With the same color, I'm going to come down here and say this is where my POW is. And I'm just making, it's a rectangle, yes, but with some curve line to it. Just the idea of a flag back there. And then here's a little line to show that the flag is in motion or connected to the pole. Here's a line to show that the flag is connected to the pole. Same color, draw that color down the flagpole, which is this blue. And then identify your post pole top. And while I'm at it, let's like run a line, bead line. And I'm, it doesn't have to be uniform, this line. So you, if it's not completely the same thickness all the way down, that's okay. And then from there, I want to pull. I put some more paint on my brush, and I'm just going to pull some of that color up a little bit. That's just to introduce another color, another texture. I 
piece, although I'm here in Carlsbad and the idea behind my piece was maybe some water back there. And then I have some water I just grabbed on my brush and I'm going to pull some of that water across that blue we just laid in. It's just giving more um, texture for the viewer to try and guess where you're at, what's going on in the piece. Awesome. I'm going to rinse my brush and I'm grabbing some white real fast. And it's the high fluid white. Sorry for my camera movement. I'm going to come in and add a few lines in here. Squiggles. I'm not counting. Show my flag. Lines. I did say that I'm just going to put a circle and dab out with paper towel. Some of that white on my POW just to create an illusion. Let's see, I want to put some little dots in here, just a couple of marks, random marks to give the idea, and in different sizes, right? So larger mark, little tiny marks, that gives the idea of the stars, and they're I'm tapping in some red just a little bit to brighten some spots. Beautiful. I have some more of the paint, the blue that I just picked up, and I'm putting over another layer. We just put, came in with that white, so I just really want to obscure. I don't want a white dot there. And with that same white, I'm going to tap in just a little bit at the top of the flagpole dot, and then I'm going to draw just a little bit down where we connected those lines to the flagpole. If the line is too big, you can always come back and paint over it. I'm going to draw a little bit of that white down. And again, let that white dry. And if it's too wide, we can come in, which mine, part of it is too wide, maybe. And I will add some darker color to it. But that's the first leg, or first wave of the color. While I'm here, I'm going to pick up some of this white on my brush, clean water, and I'm going to flick. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Deb, oops, I found it. A versatile tool. I see you there, Deb. Let's see. Let me catch up with Miss Deb real quick. Good morning again, Deb and Miss Amy. I think Amy left us, but that's okay. And Deb is saying, oops, I found it, a versatile tool. Yes, we did a similar piece this year or so ago with, 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 with watercolor. That was fun. Yes, we have done a similar piece. I've done this with different. I've done this, um, and I'll, I'll show, I've done various girls. I don't know that you've participated in all the, classes I've done, but I've done other versions of girls in flower fields before with real pretty dresses too, like wedding dresses and foofy dresses and all kinds of things. But yes, so thank you. I'm going to go back to work now. I wish I could hug you. I do miss doing classes in person like this. Okie doke, because if you did a class with me in person, I would touch all the paintings. So it was a great it was a great fun for all. 
Next, next color is, I'm going to stay with that Persian blue real quick. So I'm coming back to the blue. And, 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 and. I'm going to come back to the brush that I'm going to call the dirty brush, which is my one inch. And here, um, red, white, blue. So I want to pull some of the blue down. At this point, I'm not afraid to lose my purple lines that were dividing the field lines. It's okay. I am mindful that I'm still keeping highlight, right? I am still starting at the um, flagpole. And over here, so um, let's see, red, white, blue, red, white. I want to put some blue back here. I just brush that across. And yeah. While I'm here, I want to come in and maybe capture her shoulder. I'm using my purple pastel again. And I'm scratching in really and laying in hard um, the texture of her. And all these colors then end up in her dress. And remember me talking about her, her neck and her, her spine. So it's right here is her lovely spine. I'm drawing that down so you can see it. And then I can come side to side a bit because we would have a rib cage in there and a waistline. And just think of all the things on your body and the shape of it. So at her waistline, there's some curve. And then at her dress, I want to come in here and make some line. This is her arm where her arm will be holding some flowers late, later. So I'm just scratching in with my purple pastel over the top and those colors and all of that texture is going to lend to her dress. It's going to be great. She is kind of cock turned. So I am creating this angle, if you will, with her shoulders and her waistline. So brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. So next I'm going to grab my ultramarine blue right out of the tube. And this is a heavy bodied paint. The only reason I'm using the heavy bodied paint um, is I don't have it in fluid right now. But it let, it does well for the process. So it really, it's a heavy body. If you're not used to using different paint textures um, and different variations of viscosity, you may choose to explore that because it really helps create a dynamic um, piece. So I'm just really doing the same thing with that heavy bodied paint, laying it on top. Oh, I touched some white in there. I did touch some white, see what happens? So I'm gonna stop, because I don't want this to turn baby blue. I touch white on my palette. So I'm gonna pull that white out of my brush, hopefully. Do you want to grab a little more of the heavy body paint? I'm going to come over here. With this one, I will tell you that I'm not going to drag the heavy bodied paint across her. I picked up and I'm I picked up my brush and I'll bring some over here. And the um, ultramarine on top of the purple. So we had the purple, the diazosine purple, um, the Prussian uh, blue, 
and now the ultramarine the ultramarine is a very bright bright color um i'm gonna rinse that brush now so it gives it just builds it pops it makes the dark blues pop a little bit so it's kind of a highlight i'm rinsing the lovely little brush real quick and what i will do with this ultramarine as I want some back here put some on my palette just a little tiny bit and I'm going to grab it doesn't matter what brush I am making sure the bristles are pretty stiff putting some on my bristles and I want to tap some in here that white should be dry so that helps to make that blue stand up a little more so it's a brighter blue on my flag so that's part of that the other is as I have some clean water I'm dipping my brush in and I want to put some of this light blue into my fireworks let that dry and I'm rinsing that brush trying to figure out I see your comment Deb and I am trying to um figure out how to come back to the live classes with 2024 in person I am working on that I am I am but it may require you to travel I don't know if you'll be up for it but we'll see we'll see if I succeed with that if I can fit it in I'm really you I think um, I share with people that I realign each year with what I'm doing for my art process and I am in that process right now trying to define where I'm going so I'm also taking a pause to see where I'm going here so I'm testing my red my red's pretty good my white's good so I'm pretty safe to start bringing in white when I say white's good that was orange is dry um, I know that when I bring in the white here where I just laid that blue, it's going to get a little light, bright baby blue there, but that's okay. Um, 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 so white it is. And I am going with the, um, the, uh, high fluid to start. I will end up using the medium white. I kept a white brush that I call my clean brush. Um, I only want. So I'm just going to tap in right over the top, just like we drew down before. And here I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to start at the red, the line between the red and the orange, or the red and the white. The um, the high fluidity of the white it's it dries faster it's also um although it's it is opaque being it covers it's it's still not as it doesn't have as much um opacity to it as a medium bodied or a heavy bodied titanium white so that's why i'm introducing it first i will come in with the medium bodied white so here where i have orange and that purple where the orange and the purple mix and i have a, brown, a rich brown tone i can feel relatively safe with my high fluid white to come in and with some white so that i make sure that the paper is completely covered um, but still some of that other color bleeds through and i don't want the brightness of this orange for orange i do want to mute it so that's what i i'm doing but i am keeping when i come in with this color of this type of white um you can see the color through it it just really then shifts and gives you the idea of a feel, more of a field like the purple undernote still works for me if you look at plant life and foliage and things there's a lot of blue notes and purple notes 
And then because it's not a nightscape, the purple note works as well for me. I'm seeing your comment. Comment says, I don't mind driving. I know Ninja would love to ride. Would she be able to come along? If not, boy sticks. Um, I ha It just depends on where I succeed with. So I'm in the process of that. And if she has, I don't know if she, do you have all the proper stuff for her for um, service dog? Um, then yes, she can go anywhere. So white, let's see, red, white, blue, red. I do want to put some of this white down here because I want to cover. So it's dry. I'm not creating pink. So this is going to dry really quick. And I want to bring some highlight down there just a little bit, right? Some highlight down there just a little bit. And this way I'm going in the opposite direction than we started. So here too. Here too. So by the time we're done, the whole page will have had be covered with paint. Looking at my clock, what time is it? 8.20. I am going to be about done shortly, I think, for the first part. What color am I going to do next? I do want to do another round of orange. So same orange. Or actually, I'm going to use yellow. I'm going to use yellow instead. The cadmium yellow. Picking up, and I want to put some of that cadmium yellow in here just a little bit. You're like, what? And I want some over here. Not a lot, just a little bit. And let that dry. And yes, we'll come back in with red. And I also, while I'm here with this yellow, want to put some of that yellow up in the sky. I don't know if that comes through on camera, but I flicked some yellow and sparklers up there. If you're not succeeding with um, your flicking, sometimes to me it has to do with the bristles, if the bristles aren't that stiff. And I fibbed. I did say that I was going to use a, a toothbrush, and I chose not to because... I didn't list it, so I chose not to do the toothbrush. If you're not succeeding with flicking, you can always come in and just barely tap. Just be mindful that you don't want um, real large taps. And then sometimes when I'm tapping in paint, it looks unrealistic. It looks like it was placed there, which it has been. And I like the flicks because some it just often looks more realistic to me. Since I have pulled a rough brush and I did pull some yellow, I am going to sprinkle some little pixie dust in here is what I call it. Some, some little yellow marks in here. And because this is relatively dry, I feel safe. If this weren't relatively dry, it would turn to an ugly green. Um, you may see a green note even if it's dry because the cadmium is... Um, a transparent paint being you can see color through it and the it laying over the purples and the blues that are in there will give it the idea of a green note green color but you should st still see predominantly yellow let's see this white has dried quite a bit so I feel safe to come back to my brushing blue and draw another line down that Try and darken it up a bit if I see. There we go. And I will grab 
think I'm bad and I think I didn't note it, but I am grabbing some silver. I don't think I put it in there. I am so sorry. I'm going to touch some silver on the top of the pole. I am going to draw some silver down the flagpole to illuminate it a bit. And that's it for the silver. I am going to grab some more of the ultramarine blue and do another layer. of the ultramarine And over here, I'm just tapping it in a little bit. I'm not really defining that these lines out here as it gets further away from me. When something's further away, you see less of the detail of it. And I'm tapping in some of that at the edge on the horizon line. I'm letting that yellow dry that's right here. And I'm thinking about having to go forward. I see your comments, Deb. Awesome, but I'm, I'm working on it. And as we get closer to the new year, hopefully I'll be able to be more definitive about that. But the other is, is um, I'm going to do less shows this this year. So hopefully, I'm really busy with school. And last year about kicked my tail, especially this summer, with all that I had going on. But what I miss the most is being able to put on classes regularly. I mean, if I have a conversation with myself, what I love to do is paint. What I love to do most is paint with people. So aside from everything else, I should do what I love. And I'm an advocate of that. So I will make that happen somehow, whether it be just through video or, or in person. It will happen. Statement. And you know me and my statements. It will happen. There we go. Okay, so I'm back to my girl. I picked up my purple pastel pencil. And while I'm thinking, and this is kind of my nervous energy going on, I'm going to redraw her a little bit. So here is a shoulder line here. And I like to scribble, especially with pastel, in circular motion. I've already defined to myself what's going on with her. We've drawn her a couple of times. So I know there's an arm here. And we're going to come in next with paint. And by me scratching in this color, this purple will lend to the paint, meaning when I lay paint on top of this purple pastel, they're going to build a relationship, and that relationship is they're going to shift the color, and I know that. So the purple is lending to my next phase of color, as is all this other red and the blue and that type of thing. So that's part of my mental process. The other is is like the structure of an arm and how I'm, paint, how I'm drawing her in. So I'm using some um, perpendicular vertical line. And then I'm just using a little side stroke that has a little curve to it. If, if she is pointed in this direction, then this is the back side. This is her tricep that's back here. And then she's going to have an elbow that breaks and comes down with a flower. So and that elbow hangs out at about a waistline. So I can see where her waistline is. That's what I'm thinking about. I talked about 
collarbones and shoulder lines. So that's a V. I talked about how that her head is turned and this line here splits her skull. That gives me the center point of her skull comes down her neck and creates this curved line for her back line. Her, and although I'm not going to create her skeletal structure, I need to know about that line for when I'm designing her body and the motion of her, whatever stance she's in. And I'm just talking, sharing that out loud. There are people that are out there that follow and that ask me to give information and to explain why it is I draw in line the way I do. And that's literally why. So she's now going to come to life for me. I see that she has some rib line in here, right? We have ribs. So that defines my line that I choose to pull in here. And that's a heavy curvature line. And that brings all the way down to her waist. And at your waistline, that's a, a, there's a curve where it's concave. There's going to be tremendous shadow there. And then comes our, our buhinies, if you will. And there's some definite curve that goes to our buhinies. So I'm pulling off that spine point at her waist and pulling some curve line off and taking it to the right because of how she's turned. Her, her bottom would be over here and that's a circle so i'm creating a darker circle on this side and i'm leaving it a little light and less defined as i move to the forward space because then would become my front pelvic area and it's more flat in that area so that's really the whole reasoning behind some of the line that i make and here i'm really that's her tricep again and she's to her arm and she's going to be holding some flowers and her arms going to be extended out this way. So that is my thought process. And you're like, man, that's a mess. Well, yes. And then dresses have all kinds of texture and girls like texture and dresses and sass. So I'm going to scribble some line in here just to create some of that texture. And when we, Go to paint her. She's just going to show up. It's awesome. And now what you see too is even though you can see the field line and all that color behind, it literally is going to lend texture to her body and um, or color to her body and her dress. So the next color I'm going to bring in just to really own it now is 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 is. Normally, if I were doing this all by myself, I would start with the diazazine purple, the darkest purple that I have, and I just go for it. But um, I'm going to err on the side of caution. Because sometimes when I go that route, I end up doing multiple layers because more. Oh, I do a lot of layers and I want to do less layers this time. So I'm going to start out with um, my Cronacronome Magenta which is a pink note and I'm going to take in and I'm going to just start pulling this. It's a half inch quarter inch flat brush over her line. So here's her shoulders and I'm going to pull down. Here's her shoulder. And then that would be her shoulder blade in that V structure that we had. So here's her shoulder and here's her V structure. And I'm going to bring it down the center line or her back. And remember, we just created those rib cage lines. And I'm just going to follow that line. And what's awesome when you do this with a critacridome uh, magenta that's translucent, it sees it. You can see the blue. You can see the red. You can see all the variations of color underneath there. And it literally just starts creating her little ensemble. And because her waistline is hanging out in the blue field, if you will, remember I said at the lower part of your back where it's most concave, it would have most sh the shadow, the darkness. So by design of the field and how we laid her in or laid her on the piece, um, we built her shadow structure in as we painted the flower field. That's how that all works out. So here too, I talked about a shoulder and I said, this is her tricep 
and it's the darkest area so i'm owning it and as i want to pull from the front of her tricep to the back so from her bicep to her tricep that's what i'm doing and then down her arm do 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 But the chalk on here really gives it a three-dimensional space. You can't, it doesn't necessarily pick up on camera when we're, and even when I'm one-on-one -on -one in a large group and doing this in front of people, they have to come up or they have to just have confidence and do it on their own on their page. And then they see that it's built that it builds in so now i'm going to find this dress and i'm just going to squiggle lines just like what i did with my pastel brush or my pastel pencil i'm just going to own her dress a bit i'm using this for more magenta i'm keeping it lighter up at the front right but back here because we had all that purple laid in it's automatically darker And I'm swishing my brush back and forth. That swish creates the motion, the motion, maybe the wind's blowing, or creates the design of her dress. You're like, well, the girl is in blue on the piece that you did, yes. So we'll introduce some blue to her. But this right now is where she's at for us. Okay, two, I want to I want to touch, I'm going to grab, pick up, I have some Pershing Blue still on my palette, so I've tapped in some blue, and I'm going to own some of this heavy line in the blue. So wherever the purple line is, I grab some with the blue, and I'm just owning and sketching right over, just like you did with the pencil. And now I'm not rinsing my brush. I do not want to introduce water, but I will pull as much of that blue out of my brush as I can. I'll come back to the magenta. Start in the front. And she is... I'm going to come down her legs, show where her legs are. And before, okay, so I'm going to let her dry for a minute. Hour and 30. So I'm going to do one more pass on my fields and then I'm going to call me done for today. So the next pass that I want to do is the red on the flower fields. So. I'm making sure I'm, I know that my white, the white is dry, so I'm not going to create pink. Um, this part, this red is translucent, so some of that yellow will peek through, the yellow that we laid in. Um, so I'll see the brightness of it. I'm still okay with coming through with red. And I want some red white. I want to put some red line out here just because. Okay. Hi, Nicole. You, how are you? So good to see you. I'm getting ready to roll. Um, 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 what do I want to do before I roll? Ah. So significant, important to me is down here, I have a small cross. I may need to, where's my other? 
I may need to sharpen the pastel. Yes, pause. So let's do a pause. Let's do a pause moment. Hi. I'm going to pause real quick while I'm sharpening my pastels. I do have this really cool tool that sharpens pastels and my, my different things like that. It's different than a normal, normal, normal um, pencil sharpener. But good morning, good morning, Nicole. Glad you were able to pop in. Hope you're able to catch up for tomorrow. And here we go. So here I want to come in with a small, when something is further away, it's smaller, I can't see it. So I'm just making a purple cross. Here's one a little larger, purple cross. And here's one, and this one, I can see it going over, um, over the blue a bit. And make sure that the, um, well, it doesn't matter, but I'm making sure that my T line of the cross is really um, aligned with the, um, um, what do you call it, the horizon line. And then underneath the cross to show some, I'm going to draw in with my purple, the idea of why she's there, her purpose. And I'm going to come back to my small brush and I still have some brushing blue out. I'm going to own that cross with some of the blue. And own this one. And this one. And then tap in. I may need a little moisture because my blue's getting old. Just gonna scribble over that purple that we put there. Brilliant. And, 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 that's it. So she will, will finish her, and let's see. Tomorrow we're going to have some flowers show up. So real fast, I'm going to grab some white chalk, and we're going to just scribble some circles in here with my white chalk, because she will have a bouquet of sorts. By the time we're done, she will have a flower over here. Um, between the white and the purple, I'm going to say that she's going to have my flower here. And we'll have one. Have them however you want. I'm not looking at the original. I'm just scribbling some in. I want some down here. I know that I'm going to put something over here. Right, so my scribble lines are just lines from to tell me what I'm up to tomorrow. And you can come in with some white chalk and mute that down if you want. That chalk, again, I say it over and over, is your friend. It adds texture. It does things. It's just amazeballs. My pastel broke, so I'm going to come in and I picked up what broke, and I'm using it anyway. So I'm just scribbling circles. These marks will end up being like the underpainting or the shadow underneath. So when we come in tomorrow and we add paint, it'll go really fast using the side just really rolling that in and what this does too is this is pushing this chalk into the acrylic paint although the paint has dried one would think 
it takes about four hours or so for it to really cure. So you are literally still pushing, getting it in to bind to the paint. Beautiful. And the fact that we're on paper, paper is porous. And although acrylic paint ends up becoming kind of like plastic, we are pushing it into the fiber of the paint. Let's see, what else would I like to do? I would like to take, I'm using my teeny tiny pastel that's still left. And I'm just owning some of the shape of her. Again, I'm coming back to scribble. Tomorrow, to make, to really make her show up, you will need my, I hope you have white chalk. Right? Crayola chalk, pastel, whatever, but chalk. I use just Crayola chalk, cheap chalk for these. And then here I'm going to have her hair. And I'm going to bring some of her hair wisping out this way tomorrow. She is going to be magic and show up really fast. When I'm um, down the center of her legs, between her legs will be darker, and then where her legs exit the dress will be darker, so I added some shadow in there. But that is all I have for you today. I will see you tomorrow morning. Do, 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 do. I will see you tomorrow morning, 7 a.m. I look forward to it. I'm going to like clear off this mess, switch desks, and go do some homework. But love and hugs to you. Happy Friday. Thanks for joining me. Love, love. See you tomorrow.